It's a return visit for Hill Harper. Always a pleasure to talk with him. In addition to his starring roles in TV and film, he's a best-selling author, activist, host of the podcast Legal Wars. We'll talk a little about prison reform and inmate rehabilitation and your activism, also a little about The Good Doctor. We have passed the midpoint of the Trump presidency. Mm -hmm. Your assessments, what grade would you give him on a scale of 10? Uh, can we go into negative figures, Larry? Yeah. Oh, so we'll go minus, minus 10. <laughs> um, you know, it's, 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 he, it's, it's really our fault. You know, we all, as Americans and the voting public, have to look at ourselves in the mirror. Uh, he told us who he was. Um, you know, I think that there was a, a large percentage of the population that felt that the, the weight of the office or the seat might change him because there is a gravitas to the seat. Um, but you actually have to sit in the seat and realize it. And um, unfortunately, you know, we, we got what, who we elected. Has he succeeded in dismantling the Obama record except for Obamacare? Yeah, I mean, the most troubling aspect of his presidency, obviously, Someone, you know, I'm someone who graduated from Harvard Law School, so I always look. I you went mean, to school with him. I went to school with, with, with number 44, yes. Mm. So I always look at the legal side, you know, the, the most troubling aspect of the Trump presidency and the most troubling legacy, um, barring, barring some completely unforeseen catastrophe, is going to be the judicial appointments. Um, the folks he has appointed um, are so dangerous and so political, and they have lifetime appointments. And so... Um, that's what troubles me the most about about him being there. Uh, but uh, those judges are going to dismantle a great deal of things, not just from the Obama eight years, but from, uh, you know, we, we talk about Roe v. Wade, we can talk about all sorts of things, but those judges will be the dismantlers. That's what Chris Christie told me the other night would be his legacy, Trump's legacy that he'll leave will be yes. that. Yes. Do Not you think he succeeded in dismantling the Obama legacy? You know what? I, I don't think so. Because Have you talked with Obama lately? Uh, yeah. You know, it, it, it was talk when we see each other. It's not like, you know, he, he's, you know what's amazing? He's, he, he's kind of just staying back, you know. And, and, you know, right now Michelle's out front with her book tour and doing all the different things she's doing. And I'm so, you know, I'm so impressed by him of kind of just sitting back and letting other people do what they do. But he must be ticked. You know what, I don't know that, because remember, the Obama legacy is about hope, it was about change. And I think what we're seeing now, just look at the midterms, we're, we're seeing so many women, so many diverse folks getting involved in politics that perhaps the rebound of Trump out of Obama and then this rebound that we're seeing now is, is the true legacy. You know, President Obama proved that someone who Folks said could not win, could not be president, can't have a president with that name or looks like that, et cetera, et cetera. He's shown folks, get involved, get active, become activists, become political, and we're seeing a wave of diversity now that's unprecedented, particularly gender diversity. You're a longtime advocate of prison reform. Trump signed the First Step Act. You yep. must have been pleased with that. Yeah, you know... Were you surprised? No, 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 because at the end of the day... Um, prison reform is not about political party. It just makes sense, you know. We're 5% of the world's population, but we have 25% of the world's inmates. The, 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 the most troubling aspect of it, though, Larry, is I just did a press conference for John Ramsey, who was wrongfully convicted. Uh, How many years did he serve? He did 33 years. 33 years in prison for a crime. He, he wasn't even there, you know. And the whole plea, the whole plea bargain aspect of our criminal justice, so-called criminal justice system, the, the over-incarceration, all of these things needs to get dismantled. And it's not political. It's not Republican, Democrat. It just makes sense. Um, so we have to do it. Um, and then the legacy of black men in particular. Black men are 6% of the U.S. population, but almost 40% of the, the inmates. And there's no study that says that black men commit more crime than white men. So, so so what's really going on for the over-incarceration of, of particularly young African-American males? And, 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 you know, all of us have to, to take a look. Aren't you surprised that Republicans were for this? No, because, it, it, you know, everybody wants to stand up and say that they're doing something around budget, 
right? And so it becomes a budgetary issue on the Republican side. They can tout that they're, you know, they're draining the swamp, they're making government smaller, um, they're spending less. And so you, 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 you have folks that are interested in social justice, interested in criminal justice reform, and then you have folks that are interested in so-called making the government smaller. Those two folks can, can work together in this space. How do you feel about eligible uh, felons now have their voting rights restored in Florida, of all places? It's, 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 it's essential, and it should be restored in every single state. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, being able to vote is the fundamental aspect of our democracy. And if you served your time, uh, that right needs to exist for you. And the fact that we're even, the fact that we're even debating or, or being marvel that Florida did that is, is, is a travesty in itself, in my opinion, right? Because it should, it should be automatic. It's the fundamental right of being an American is your ability to cast a vote. And having served your time, yeah. it's, 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 it, you know, it, it doesn't make sense to me. All right, what's your take on what's going on? <laughs> it's almost, <laughs> it wasn't sad, it'd be laughable. Uh, what's going on in the, uh, in the state of Virginia? Well, uh, you know, um, <laughs> it's, yeah, listen, I, I don't want to, uh, I just want people to represent, I want, I want good people in office, right? F folks that have acted correctly, done the right thing, and, and if, and if, and if you're a racist, if you're a misogynist, if you've been violent towards women, violent towards, and if you, you've gone blackface, whatever, those things, you know what, just admit it. Say, I've learned, I've done this, done that. I'm going to take a step back. I'm going to let someone else step in. Absolutely, but there should be resignations. The and governor of Virginia yes. is, I would call, a major liberal. Come on, Larry. He used to be a Republican. To what? I think he used to be a Republican. That's what I was told. I, I mean, I don't know him personally, but I don't think he's a... I, I would not call him a liberal. You, you don't think his... I don't even use the word liberal, though, Larry. I use the word progressive, and I don't think he's, I don't think he's particularly a progressive. But at the end but of the day... But he's not regressive. Well, it doesn't matter. The point is, is that if you have not done something to redress appearing in blackface with someone in a KKK outfit... Oh, it was outfit, horrible. It's, it's in, in, in the 80s. It's, it's atrocious. And, and, and what folks don't realize, and this is what I think people have to wrap their head around, it, those images are deeply painful for African Americans. And it's not just a talking point. It's not just, oh, you shouldn't have done it. There's a, so much historical pain that, to me, the honorable thing is to say, I want to do something to redress that pain. I'm actually going to take a sacrifice myself because I'm going to honor the folks that I shouldn't have done that. I made a mistake. And I'm going to show other young people not to take these actions. Because what happens is if you feel like you can get away with anything, it, it's almost endorsing the behavior. Say, hey, listen, do whatever you want. Be aggressive. It's, it's just like the I whole Me Too movement. Same, same thing. Same thing. Laura Ingram, who seems to get in trouble every week, <laughs> said it. Uh, she wonders whether it's culturally appropriate for black actors to portray white historical figures in the play Hamilton, which is, by the way, the number one hit play ever. Yes. What do you make of that statement? You know, there obviously Lin Manuel Miranda is trying to communicate a specific message with the way that play is cast, right? And therefore, you never want to restrict, I believe, the artist from doing what they do. I mean, you're creating art. I mean, obviously, uh, it's a fictional piece based off historical figures. You know, the, Alexander Hamilton wasn't running around singing in the streets. I mean, you know, and he, and he certainly wasn't mm -hmm. doing it on a Broadway stage. So, 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 so it, you get in big, to me, art is art. So you want creatives to create. You don't want to get into, into to that mix. And even, uh, and I'll include it, even blackface. If, 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 if artists want to appear in blackface, that's their choice as artists. It's different when you're a governor. A governor's not an artist, right? He's a public servant. Have you got a favorite in the democratic field? 
you know, I think it's I think it's wide open. I'm excited. I'm excited uh, for folks that are going to jump in that haven't jumped in yet. Um, I think there's going to be some surprises, and 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 I'm excited about who's going to hopefully rise out of out of that group. Watch Senator Brown. Okay. Of Ohio. Okay. I'm going to bring back the Rust Belt. Uh, How's things at the Good Doctor? The Good Doctor's great. You know, I'm, I, I'm so proud to be on a show that just represents good things, you know, celebrating diversity, celebrating difference. You know, Freddie Highmore, who plays The Good Doctor, uh, is a wonderful young actor who's doing a magnificent job. I think he should win every Emmy, every Golden <laughs> Globe for what the work he does every day on the show. And um, David Shore, you know, who's, who's the creator of House, is, is, our, is our executive producer and such, you know, he's the best writer in TV. And so I'm, I'm so happy and proud to be on the show. I'm kind of the bad doctor on The Good Doctor, but it's, you know, it's okay. <laughs> Are you ever going to run for office yourself? I, you know, I must have I, thought I, about I, it. I've, I've thought about it. I've been pulled to do it. I've been pushed. You know, I, I just want to do what I can do to help m make communities better, particularly folks who don't have voice. And I feel like, at least right now, the way I can do that best is through my foundation, through the work that I do, um, and it's not necessarily holding a political office. That may change at some point. But right now, I'm no intention. Always great seeing you. Larry, thanks so much. Continued great. You are a legend, so you, it's great you, to talk to you. You're terrific.